Hello and welcome to another episode of the ZTV Sports Report, your home for all things Akron Zips Athletics. I'm Max Aracy, joined once again by Dustin James. Dustin, glad to have you back. Glad to be back. Thank you again. Today's episode is going to be all about Zips basketball, so don't go anywhere because the ZTV Sports Report starts now. Where we left off last show with the women's team, their next game was a road matchup against Central Michigan on January 29th. Here's Drew to show us how they fared. Hello Zip Sports fans, today we'll be going over the women's basketball game at Central Michigan. Let's get started. The first points scored in the game were by Akron number 25 Jordan Dawson with a three point jumper assisted by number 34 Reagan Bass. Here we see Akron number 30 Lane Farrell block a possible two point shot and then later in the game she makes a three point jumper which brings the score tied 6-6. Six and six. The Chippewas stayed toe to toe with the Zips as number 14 Molly Davis makes a layup and then later number 20 Tiana Timpe makes a three point jumper assisted by number 21 Jahari Smith. Both the Zips and the Chippewas stayed head to head in this first quarter and that's how it stayed going into the second. Akron number 14, Rachel Martindale, makes a three-pointer assisted by number one, Kendall Miller. Then Jordan Dawson runs half court to make a good layup, making the score 22-19. The Chippewas kept answering back though, thanks to Molly Davis, who was on fire this game, making some great layups, including here, where she steals the ball from the zips and takes it all the way to the basket. She scored a total of 16 points this game. But right before the end of the first half, Jordan Dawson makes an awesome layup, making the score at halftime 34-31. In the third quarter, the Zips start taking the lead as Lane Farrell makes an awesome three-point jumper. But right after that, the Chippewas made a three-point jumper of their own thanks to number three, Hannah Null. The Zips hung on though, and at the end of the third quarter, the Zips led 54-48. In the fourth quarter, the Zips were able to hold their lead against Central Michigan thanks to many made layups. The Chippewas still fought hard to try to pull off a victory, but ultimately the Lady Zips were able to keep up and win. The final score for this game was Central Michigan 60, Akron 70. Jordan Dawson was the highest scorer for this game with 23 points as well as 12 rebounds and 2 assists. For ZTB Sports Report, this is Andrew Youngdahl, Go Zips! It was a game where the Zips were expecting a win and they managed to come out of it with just that. Yeah, it was a really great game for the Zips. It was a really hard fought game all the way through up until about the, the end of the third quarter, the Zips started really pulling ahead. And they just never really gave Central Michigan a chance to hop back into the game. So it was a great job to see them close out the way they did there. Yeah, definitely nice. Once they got that lead, you know, they kept it. Right. They kept playing strong. Right. On the last episode, we also discussed a difficult upcoming stretch for the women. Two games against Western Michigan with one against Toledo spliced in between. Let's take a look at that first Western game and see if they could start it with a bang. What's up everybody, I'm John Jackson and today we'll be going over to Akron Zips versus the Western Michigan Broncos. Let's get straight into the action. Without question, this has to be one of my favorite games of the year so far. Throughout the entirety of this game, all four quarters were hard fought. Neither team wanted to lose this game, that's for sure. And it shows on a defensive end. The player of the game for the Western Michigan Broncos was Taylor Williams. She set the tone offensively and defensively by scoring 16 points and grabbing 14 rebounds. She also had three blocks, which caused major problems in the interior for the Akron Zips. I don't think that discouraged Jordan Dawson, though, because she scored 29 points for the game, being the leading scorer for the Zips. Unfortunately, she would be the only player to score double digits for the Zips. Even so, that was not the case for Western Michigan. While Taylor Williams continued to feast inside, it was Riley Jacobson and Lauren Ross who both scored 16 points to help her out. This allowed Western Michigan to key in on Jordan Dawson, who only shot 9 of 24 for the game. Lauren Ross went 2 for 5 from three-point range, 
But with those two three-pointers, it seemed like they were daggers. When it's such a close game, everything matters. Both teams shot horribly from the field, with Western Michigan shooting 35.8% and Akron Zip shooting 31.6%. We got to do better than that. Jordan Dawson was able to go coast to coast on a couple of occasions, but these opportunities never came easy. But ladies and gentlemen, this is what got me out of my seat. Both teams going at it, trading clutch baskets. This is what basketball is all about. And just when you think the zips were about to pull away, Western Michigan had other plans. I don't know how much more I can take, folks. I don't know how much more I can take. What I can say is that this will definitely be a learning lesson for the zips. In the end, Western Michigan would beat the Zips 57-53. to I've been your host, John Jackson, on the ZTV Sports Report. I'm signing off, everybody. Thank you, John, for that coverage. A devastating loss in what was a very winnable game. And, you know, this is a game that, at least in my opinion, it honestly stings more than if they lost by, you know, double digits. Right. And if it was a wider margin, it was just the fact that, you know, they were so close, but they weren't able to come out of it with the win. Right, especially the significance that win would have had moving forward in the, the max standings. But Central Michigan's a very strong defensive team. Uh, we saw that as they did force 18 turnovers against Akron, but Akron played tremendously defensively right mm -hmm. back against them. They also forced 18 turnovers. It was a very competitive game. Akron started with a good lead in the first quarter, but each quarter they just slowly let the lead get out of their hands a little bit, unfortunately. But Jordan Dawson had another tremendous game, 29 points, and she also scored her 1,000th career point which is a unbelievable milestone to hit. So A very notable benchmark for you right. know, any college basketball player. Right, hats off to her. The Zips would lose the Toledo game in a similar heartbreaking fashion, but they managed to bounce right back with a 16-point victory in the second game against Western Michigan. They currently sit with a record of 10-8 and 7-5 and and in the conference. We're now going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll shift over to the men's team and take a look at two games against the Miami Redhawks. You're watching ZTV. What the f Hey, you know what? I like the way you smell. Oh yeah, strangle me with love. You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. You're watching ZTV. Just two days apart from one another, the men's basketball team had back-to-back matchups against Miami. Let's take it over to Dan and see how they did. The Akron Zips men's basketball team played back-to-back -back games against the Miami Redhawks, one at home on Friday, February 4th, 
and the other on the road on Sunday the 6th. In Game 1, Akron got off to a hot start thanks to great ball movement and strong rim presence by Aziz Bandago. However, Miami would keep this game close throughout most of the first half. Didi Grant nails this triple as he would lead the Red Hawks in scoring with 18 points on the night. For the Zips, Enrique Freeman led the way with 21 points, going 9 for 13 from the field. Freeman also led both teams in rebounds with 11. Here, Bandago continues to assert his dominance at the rim with this monstrous dunk on Miami's precious Aya. Makai Larry was Miami's second leading scorer, coming off the bench with 12 points. Akron would lead 30-27 at halftime, but Isaiah coleman lands would keep this game close with this triple. Miami made 33% of their shots from behind the arc. Enrique Freeman would continue to dominate on both ends of the floor while also getting scoring help from Xavier Castaneda and Ali Ali, who both scored in the double figures to help Akron run away with the lead. The Zips would win their first game by a final score of 66-55. Akron would improve to 14-6 on the season, while the Red Hawks would continue to fall in the standings and drop to 9-12. Two days later, both teams would rematch in Oxford. Miami gets off to an early lead with help from Makai Larry, who, despite coming off the bench, led the Red Hawks in scoring with 27 points. Miami's second leading scores were Precious Aya and Isaiah coleman lands who only put up 8 points each. Aziz Bandago brings out his inner Evan Mobley with this thunderous block at the rim, denying Elijah McNamara. Brian Trimble Jr. nails a couple of triples to swing the momentum towards Akron's way. Trimble was one of four Zips players with double-digit points, including Greg Trimble, Xavier Castaneda, and Ali Ali, who led Akron with 21 points. Akron led 28-26 at halftime, but would once again run away with the lead in the second half. As a team, the Zips shot for over 52% from both the field and behind the arc. Miami only made less than 40% of their field goals and shot only 30% from deep. Akron also out-rebounded Miami 36-20, helping the Zips maintain control of the game. Akron would complete the sweep over the Red Hawks by winning 71-59. The Zips would continue to dominate the standings by holding a 15-6 record, while Miami falls to 9-13 on the season. This is Dan Groen with the ZTV Sports Report, and thank you for watching. Two dominating victories for the Zips. Some big momentum builders as they gear up for the showdown against Kent on the 11th. And you know, looking at a team like Miami, they're not a bad team, but they're not towards the top of the MAC. Right. And if you're Akron, this is a team that you know you expect to beat both times. Certainly. So it's nice to know they didn't you know underperform and you know stoop to Miami's level. They played zip basketball and they came out with the wins. Right. It was two great performances by the Zips. Uh, Enrique really led the charge for us that first game at home. He dropped 21 points, 13 rebounds, and had three really nice big blocks for us. Um, and then the second game is, is a really efficient game by the Zips. We had four players shooting in double-digit points. So when you have the team shooting that well all around and 52% from the stripe, mm -hmm. you're not going to lose too many games when you're shooting that hot. So Yeah, you play like that and the wins will show for it. Right, they'll follow. The men's team has played one more game since Miami, winning at Northern Illinois on February 8th by a score of 70 to 64. The recent winning streak takes them to a record of 16 and six and nine and three in the conference. Now, we briefly touched on them last episode during the hot seat, but I think we're due to take closer looks at both basketball coaches, John Gross and Melissa Jackson. Let's see what they're all about. Coach Collab does an unbelievable job. Head coach Melissa Jackson is currently in the midst of her fourth season in charge of the Akron Zips women's basketball team. Since taking over the top job back in 2018, Jackson has led the Zips to a record of 48 and 52. In her first season, from 2018 to 2019, the Zips secured 16 wins, earning Jackson the title and honor of being the winningest first season coach in program history. Before becoming a basketball coach in the first place, Jackson was an established and successful player in her own right. In high school, she was an All-State selection at Hazleton Area High School in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, before playing four seasons as a guard at the University of Richmond, where she appeared in 50 career games. She graduated in 2004. Her coaching career began with a role as an assistant coach at the University of Delaware from 2004 to 2008, 
a stint which saw the team take a trip to the NCAA tournament in 2007. After leaving Delaware, Jackson got a position with the University of Akron, where she has been ever since. In the 10-year period leading up to her hire as the head coach, Jackson served in various positions, ranging from associate head coach to recruiting coordinator to assistant coach. She was an instrumental piece in helping develop Zip's talent during these years, helping a wide array of players earn all MAC honors. When it was announced on June 27, 2018, that Jackson would become the new head coach of the program, she had the challenge of following up 12-year head coach Jody Kest, who holds the title of being the all-time winningest coach in program history. Despite a lot to live up to, Jackson has done just that and has more than proved that she is capable of leading the team in the right direction for years to come. What's up everybody? This is Josh and today we'll be looking at our men's basketball head coach. Let's get into it. John Gross has been coaching college basketball since 1993, but we don't see him coach any D1 ball until 1996 when he was an assistant coach at North Carolina State. From there, he coached for a year at Butler and then three more years at Xavier. After his run at Xavier, we really start to see him gain traction and recognition as a coach. After Xavier, he started as an assistant coach at Ohio State, but eventually made his way up to an associate head coach. And during Gross's four-year run at Ohio State, the Buckeyes definitely saw success. They won two Big Ten championships and even made it to the NCAA championship one year. After he left Ohio State in 2008, Gross landed his first head coaching gig at the University of Ohio. And honestly, these might have been the best years of his coaching career. In 2010, Gross wins his first MAC championship at Ohio. And then fast forward a couple years to 2012, he had a huge season. Not only did he lead the Bobcats to another MAC championship, he made a huge splash in Sweet 16. He knocked off major programs like Michigan and USF before he lost to the number one seed, North Carolina, in overtime. After that amazing season at Ohio, Gross received the offer to coach at Illinois where he became known for his players' academic achievement. The most notable example of this was his 2015-2016 team. His team had a 3.27 GPA and he had six players make all academic Big Ten. Now let's fast forward a couple more years. In 2017, Gross inherited an already successful Zips program, and he fully intended on keeping that success rolling. And I think it's safe to say that he has. His most recent achievement was in 2020. After winning the regular season, Gross's Zips were declared MAC champion. In 2021, Gross signed a five-year extension with Akron, so it's safe to say we'll be seeing a lot more of him. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for Coach Gross. This is Josh Feaster, signing off. Thanks, Josh, for the insight. There's little doubt in my mind that these are the two people we want in charge of our program moving forward. And starting with John Gross, you know, as Akron fans, I feel like we kind of have an interesting relationship with him because um, he used to coach at Ohio University, fellow MAC Conference School, um, and he had some really good teams with Ohio those years right. to the point where I remember because Akron also had some good teams those yep. years. And it was to the point where, you know, Ohio was as much of a rival to Akron as Kent State was. And that's really saying a lot. Mm. Um, but, you know, he was really successful with Ohio in the 2011 to 12 season. He actually took him to the Sweet 16. So I feel like that really proves that um, he doesn't know just he doesn't just know how to get to these high levels, but he knows how to succeed at them as right, well. Right. And shifting towards Melissa Jackson, you know, she has a very extensive resume as well. When she came to the University of Akron, she made an immediate impact as the year before she was hired, they had a losing record. And then the year following her hire, uh, they go 16 and 15 with a winning record. Um, and she's actually, in fact, the most winningest coach in the first two seasons for a Zips women's basketball coach. As she's won 30 games already, and that's a pretty impressive milestone to hit. Very herself, impressive. So. It's time for one more commercial break, but afterwards, we'll be diving right into the hot seat. Stay tuned. You're watching ZTV. Your mind we will invert when you hear those megahertz. It'll melt your face when you hear that bass. Don't be shy, stick around when we all get down on Logan. Your source for music, arts, and entertainment in the Akron area and beyond. Vibe with us, we'll make you free when you watch us only on ZTV.
TV. How prepared is your family if a hurricane shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a blizzard? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. I should have known my demise was at hand. My life was ended in a single snap from a madman. But, to everyone's surprise, I have returned. You're watching ZTV. Welcome back. We're gonna close out the show today, as always, with The Hot Seat. Be sure to tweet us at ZTV Sports using the hashtag The Hot Seat for any suggestions on what you'd like us to talk about. Today, we're gonna to be diving deep into what the men's basketball team needs to do to pull out a wagon wheel victory in their upcoming game against Kent State. Right, there's definitely a, a handful of key points that the Zips should focus on if they wanna come out and uh, win this wagon wheel. Uh, for starters, Sincere Carey cannot drop a career-high 32 points again or anywhere near that. He's averaging about 17 points a game right now, um, and that's a lot more realistic. But when a player gets hot like that, it really just helps the uh, the rest of the team get a lot of momentum, and it's it's going to be tough to to beat a team that's playing that strong together. So yeah, I mean, if they let Sincere Carey drop, you know. I mean, not even 30. They right. let him drop 25. Right. There's a good chance they're not going to win this game. Right. Um, so they really need to contain him. But then at the same time, you know, if you put like, they can't put too much attention on him because, you know, you focus your entire game plan around sincere carry and that'll just kind of open up the door for other Kent players. Right. To and he can move in. the ball around really well himself. He so. really can. So yeah, they've, that's probably the number one key to the game, honestly. Right. They've got to contain sincere carry and yep. not let other players you know, fill those shoes. Right. Um, and they've also got to, Zip's got to hit their open looks. Right. Um, I feel like they're a team, they don't really struggle, um, you know, really finding open shots and, you know, getting the spacing that they need, but sometimes they just can't hit them. You know, they'll go through all the work of, um, you know, crafting up a solid play, getting the open look, and then just not, you know, not, not finishing. Right. Um, so they really need to hit the shots that they need to hit and, you know, keep, getting those open looks like they normally do. I feel like that really speaks to John Gross. Right. Um, just the game plan that he comes with every game. You know, he's always ready. Um, and so they just gotta gotta hit the gotta hit the shots because you know the looks are gonna be there. Right. And against Kent, you, you need to hit every shot you, you can make because it's probably gonna come down to a last possession ball game. So every every shot matters intensely. Um, and then as well, the big men really need to help control the paint. They need to get some offensive rebounds to help us get some second chance points and then importantly get a lot of defensive rebounds to keep the ball out of Kent's hands. Just don't let them continuously get second chance points and uh, just make it a very tough game for them. We have a bit of a smaller big men team. So the fact that we have Enrique Freeman, who's one of a handful of players in the entire nation averaging a double-double really speaks out to our physicality and how hard we really go for loose balls, rebounds, and they're just really going to need to show that for this game as well. So Yeah, and I mean, you think about the fact that you get a big man like Enrique Freeman and you get him to take control in the paint, in the interior. Right. Um, not only does that do wonders for your interior game, but it also helps open up, you know, around the rest of the court. Right. It'll help open up those three-point shots. Um, it'll really just be beneficial all around. Right. You know, and it starts in that interior position where yeah. Enrique Freeman really dominates. He does, yeah. Um, but, so they've also need to keep the ball moving, though, because obviously we mentioned that they, you know, do a pretty good job at getting open looks. Um, but whenever they're not getting those looks, it's because they're letting their game just get a little bit too stagnant, a little too flat-footed. Um, you know, there are times when it'll seem like, you know, five game minutes will go by, and it seems like the Zips haven't made any progress. Right. And, you know, th that's when um, your opponents can really get back into the game. 
Um, and that's how you lose your lead. Right. So it's very important um, that, you know, they really just keep the ball moving. They don't get flat footed because that'll kill you. Right. And you have four players averaging double digit points. So, mm -hmm. you know, anyone can have the hot hand at any moment. So yeah. you really do want to keep everybody involved, keep them feeling confident with their shots. Because like I said, it, it's probably going to come down to the end of the game. So you're, you're going to need everyone feeling good about themselves. Definitely. Um, as well, the Zips are a horrible free throw team on the season. They're shooting a low 67%. And that, that first Kent game, they shot 72%, which obviously is a bit of a step up from their season total, but yeah. it's nothing at all to brag about. The fact about, that that's so. considered a solid game then, right. the 72%, that's a big red flag. Right. And in a game like this, free throws are going to be huge. Every point's going to matter. So mm -hmm. every every shot, every bucket counts. They, they really need to execute anytime they can get yeah. to the stripe. So. And, you know, at a certain point, I mean, I feel like, you know, we can talk game plan all day. Um but when it comes down to it, they're just going to have to perform. Right. You know, it's going to be a big crowd. It's going to be the biggest they have all year. The nerves are definitely going to be running pretty high. Certainly. They've got to, you know, just keep those under control. And I'm pretty confident that they can, you know, really come out with a win. Right. And with that, it's time to wrap up another episode of the ZTV Sports Report. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ZTV Sports. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at ZTV Sports Report. I'm Max Aracy. I'm Dustin James. Thank you for watching and go Zips. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV, make media, make a difference.